welcome back. Focal Point, AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. The program is Focal Point. The network is AFR Talk, the most dangerous and feared radio network in the United States of America because we tell here the unvarnished truth. We are truth vigilantes here at Focal Point. We are vigilantes for truth. We are the Focal Point posse. We are in hot pursuit of the truth. We find it. We are going to tag it. And we are going to bag it. That's what we are about here at Focal Point. This is the home of muscular Christianity on conservative uh, talk radio. Now, I talked in the last segment about the, the there is an effort. You've got to understand this. These are mental health professionals. And, again, I'm on, I'm on adult themes here. So if you've got tender ears in the neighborhood, please be aware of that. Uh, we're going to have adult themes to the bottom of this segment. Then we'll get on to some lighter stuff. But you need to be aware of that for the next uh, 12 minutes that what we are seeing is these are mental health professionals. These are researchers. These are not nut jobs. These are not nut cases. These are people who have a certain level of respect and attainment in the academic community, and they are actually saying and arguing that pedophilia is just another sexual orientation like homosexuality. Like homosexuals, they're arguing they're born this way. There's not a single solitary thing they can do about it. We just have to understand them. We have to help them. We have to embrace them. We have to sympathize with them and all that kind of thing. We were wrong about homosexuality. Maybe we are wrong about pedophilia. And this illustrates the point that I made at the beginning of the segment. Once you break the plane, once you go beyond, the moment you take the first step beyond Sexual intimacy is reserved for the marriage relationship of one man and one woman, period. That's the standard. That's the truth. That's been the standard since the dawn of time. When God made man, when God created us in his image, he created us for sexual union with one person and one person only, and that is your spouse, your opposite sex marriage partner. Now, that is the only relationship in which a society should promote, endorse, or sanction sexual intimacy. Now, we may decide we're not going to punish other forms of sexual intimacy, but what we can say is we're not going to promote any other forms of sexual intimacy. We're not going to subsidize it. We're not going to endorse it. We're not going to promote it. We're not going to say it's okay. We don't care whether it is sexual immorality. We don't care whether it is adultery. We don't care whether it is homosexuality. We don't care whether it is polygamy. We don't care whether it is sex with children. We are not going to promote it. We're not going to endorse it. And you're going to have to deal with the consequences if you make those choices. But my point is, once you break that plane, once you break the plane, there is no place to stop. There is no logical place at which you can stop in saying that any kind of sexual expression whatsoever is okay. And that brings me to, and this, this will kind of maybe freak you out, but again, uh, we need to understand exactly what we are dealing with here as a culture and where we are headed. And to illustrate, the, we're not on a slippery slope anymore. We're plunging, we've plunged off a moral cliff. You know, I saw a video yesterday, maybe you saw this, of two guys got themselves in this big giant ball and they were rolling down this bunny slope at this ski hill in Europe somewhere. And this thing veered disastrously off course, and it went over a cliff. And they died. one guy died, and the other one's in the hospital with severe injuries. In other words, that thing took on a life of its own. That Once it got off track, once it veered off, the first moment it veered off that bunny trail, because it was at some kind of bunny hill on the ski resort, once it veered off of that bunny trail, it was headed for the bottom of the abyss. And that's my point. Once we get beyond sexual intimacy is for a man and a woman in marriage, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. Exclusive. That's it. No pornography. No prostitution. No uh, fornication. No adultery. We're not going to legitimize any of that. We're not going to protect it. We're not going to promote it. We're not going to use tax dollars to subsidize it or give it special protections in law. Once you break that plane, there is no place to stop. Now, again, I'll, I, I, I apologize even for talking to you about this, but, but these are the issues that we've got to be aware of and got to be um, uh, uh, prepared to, to respond to. I'm, I'm looking at three articles here, three of them, all on sex with animals. And here is an 
article in uh, Salon, which is a big-time left-wing publication. And here's the title of the piece, A Legal Defense of Donkey Sex. Uh, here's how the piece, begin, uh, piece begins. The prosecution of a Florida man accused of having sexual contact with a miniature donkey is unconstitutional, according to his lawyers. So we've got lawyers arguing openly in public court, in open court, that sexual contact, having a law that prohibits sexual contact with an animal, is unconstitutional. In a court motion, the defense claims that the state law against bestiality deprives 32-year-old Carlos Romero of his, quote, personal liberty and autonomy when it comes to private, intimate activities. Now, this was exactly what Anthony Kennedy wrote in the Lawrence v. Texas case in 2003. If it's a matter of private sexual contact, nobody has got a right to define for anybody else what's appropriate, what is permissible. Now, was Anthony Kennedy thinking about sex with miniature donkeys when he wrote that? No. But that legal precedent has opened the floodgates of evil to the point where you've got people in court arguing that it's unconstitutional to limit sexual contact between human beings and miniature donkeys. Here's what his attorneys write. Therefore, the only possible rational basis for the statute is a moral objection to sexual acts considered deviant or downright disgusting. Now, this was exactly the moral argument against normalizing homosexual behavior. This was exactly the way homosexual behavior was understood to be for the first 350 years of our life as a republic that a, we had a moral objection to sexual acts that were considered deviant or downright disgusting. Now, the word disgusting there, it's a strong term, but the word that's translated abomination in, in Hebrew means exactly that. It refers to sort of a visceral reaction to something, uh, just a visceral distaste. You see something and you just recoil from it. And that's the word that's used to describe homosexual behavior in the Old Testament. Now, it's not, that's not the only thing it's used to describe. So it, it doesn't put homosexual behavior in a class all by itself. I mean, there's a lot of things that are an abomination to God in the Old Testament, a false weight. That is, if you cheat at business, that's an abomination in God's eyes, just like homosexual behavior is an abomination in God's eyes, just like sex with animals is an abomination in God's eyes. Cheating in business is an abomination in God's eyes. Haughty eyes are an abomination in God's eyes. Sowing discord among brothers, according to Proverbs, is an abomination. He has a visceral reaction to it. And that's why we used to have laws against homosexual behavior, because it was, we had a moral objection to sexually deviant behavior. And Anthony, Tom, Anthony Kennedy said, you can't do that anymore. You no longer can use the law to express moral disapproval of sexually deviant uh, behavior. And now these attorneys are using exactly the same reasoning of the Supreme Court to argue that sex with animals is okay. They go on to say the personal morals of the majority, whether based on religion or traditions, cannot be used as a reason to deprive a person of their personal liberties. That's exactly the reason that was the argument that was used to relax the standards against homosexual behavior. You can't do that. You can't use religious tradition. You can't use moral tradition to limit somebody's personal liberties. That's wrong. That goes back to the issue of morality. They're saying you can't. You, you, we're wrong to legislate morality, but that's exactly what they're doing. They're legislating their version of morality. Their version of morality, you can't say sex with animals, is wrong. And they want to legislate that. They want to impose their morality on us. So let's forget that, that nonsense about imposing morality. That's all you can do. That's all you can legislate. The only thing you can legislate is morality. The only question is whose morality is it going to be? Is it going to be the morality of degraded man or is it going to be the morality of an exalted God? Those are the only choices uh, that we have. Uh, you know, and, and the only people that are, you know, this is weird, but the only people that are arguing against bestiality, sex with animals, are animal rights activists. 
They're the only ones that are arguing against this. They're saying it's, it's harmful to animals. Well, that's not my objection to it. My objection to it is that it is degrading to human beings. And we should not tolerate it. We shouldn't promote it. We shouldn't embrace it. But, but here's my point, ladies and gentlemen. The exact, exact, exact same reasoning that was used to lower the bar for fornication, to lower the bar for adultery, to lower the bar for homosexuality, is now being used right now as we speak to lower the bar against incest. I mean, who are we to tell a brother and a sister that they can't have sexual union? We are imposing our moral standards on them. Those are just religious and moral traditions. You can't deprive people of their personal liberties like that. And ladies and gentlemen, serious people are advocating this argument right now as you and I are sitting here having this conversation. The same argument is being used to relax the standards against pedophilia. Uh, you can't deprive somebody of their personal liberties. If a child is willing to engage in sexual activity and the adult is, why should we stop them? Why should we deprive them of their personal liberties just because of some religious or moral outdated tradition? And now the same exact argument is being used to relax standards against bestiality, against sex with miniature donkeys. Who are we? These attorneys, this is an open court. They're making a constitutional legal argument that you cannot deprive somebody of their right to have sex with a beast of burden because of your moral traditions, because of your religious traditions. Those are outmoded. They're antiquated. we got to get rid of all of that nonsense. We can't deprive people of their personal liberty. So, you know, it validates, you know, my point here, ladies and gentlemen, is this validates everything that we have said from day one uh, about the issue of human sexuality. Uh, so obviously what we must do, we must continue to advocate for public policy that enshrines only the union, the sexual union of a husband and wife in marriage, period. We ought to work toward that end. That ought to be our goal because that is the only standard that is healthy for a culture and for a society. Once you break that plane, once you go beyond that, we are headed into an abyss of moral uh, darkness, and that's where we're headed. We're like the people in that ball going off the slope, heading down off the cliff into the abyss, and we're here to stand athwart history and yell, stop. Focal Point, AFR Talk.